Renfield and Rita hit theaters on April 14, exclusively in theaters. The film stars Nicholas Holt as the title character Renfield, who basically is the servant to the very famous Dracula, played by Nicolas Cage. He needs to give him food and find innocent people to kill to feed to Dracula. But Nicholas Holt's character Renfield wants a new life for himself, free of the servantry of Renfield. This is where he runs into Rebecca, a cop who's trying to solve, uh, who's trying to crack on the Lobo family, who are the ones who killed her father as a cop. Uh, Rebecca is played by Aquafina, and she's chasing after Teddy uh, Lobo, the son of the crime boss Lobo family, who is the one who killed her father in duty. He is played by Ben Schwartz. The film is an hour and 33 minutes and is rated R. Welcome back to a brand new movie review here on Max Talks Movies. We're talking about Renfield. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and the bell. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, movie rankings, and box office breakdown shows. So please subscribe and the bell. If you're new to the channel, comment down below. What are your thoughts? First of all, if you've seen this film, did you like it, not like it? Uh, if you have not seen it, tell me you're going to check it out in theaters, or is this a movie that screams streaming to you and learn to watch at home? And also, please like the video, guys. The thumbs up button down below. That's how you support this channel. So this is a movie that I was very excited for. I think Nicholas Holt getting all this work in the recent years has been great. I think Nicholas Holt is a really great actor um, and of course the big reason why everyone wanted to see this including myself was for nick cage um he goes a thousand percent into his performances and you could definitely expect that coming in and i was very excited to see him play dracula i was also very excited this movie was only 90 minutes long uh again 93 minutes with credits it's a very short movie um another note for you guys this also comes from the writer from sorry from director chris mckay um, who has directed films like Tomorrow War, which came out in 2021 for Prime Video, um, as well as the Lego Batman movie back in 2017. Writers for the movie um, include the screenplay from Ryan Ridley, um, who is a writer for years on Rick and Morty. Um, that's what, and also wrote the screenplay for an episode of Invincible, um, and, and other things, but the, the also the story for the movie comes from Robert Kirkman, uh, who based this on the original idea. Kirkman is the creator of both The Walking Dead and Invincible. Uh, so those are the people that are a part of this movie, and let's get into this film. So for me, the, my, I'll go my positives, the negatives, and then my score. I think by far and away for me, the biggest positive that this movie has by far is the cast. This is an absolute likable cast that has great chemistry with each other and oozes a lot of charisma, but also a lot of down to earth people. Um, this cast, as I said, is fantastic. Nicholas Holt, uh, well, yes, everyone is talking about Nick Cage. Holt is the one who is the anchor for this movie. This is his movie from start to finish. And Nicholas Holt is perfect at playing these characters who are very likable. He's a very easy actor to root for right off the bat. Um, and he's this is also perfect casting for this movie. He is excellent in this film. He's he is a great actor because he's the range of playing this all he can play this villain or jerk who you can easily not like. But then he can play this very likable, um, how do I say this awkward main characters as he plays in a lot of movies, and he is terrific in this film. But still, by far, the best part of this movie is Nick Cage as Dracula. He is thoroughly entertaining. He brings a side of Dracula that he's kind of a beaten down, um, kind of desperate Dracula, where Renfield obviously is not feeding him a lot. And he is getting mad. He has a lot of different forms throughout the entire movie. Um, but Nick Cage brings it all. And there's even the best scene of the whole movie is a scene with him and Nick Cage and uh, with with Renfield and Dracula in Renfield's apartment. That yes, there's some comedy into it, but it's a very good scene of showing Dracula's actual manipulation on people. It's talked about how Dracula can show you the best of what you want, and I think this movie does a great job of actually physically and obviously dialogue driven showing you how Dracula can be doing this. Uh, but again, Nick Cage brings that drama, but he also brings the comedy. That really works. Uh, all the comedy around Dracula for me works. Um, and Cage absolutely delivers in this movie. Um, it's always great to see both Aquafina and Ben Schwartz. Um, 
two of the funniest actors working today, um, especially Ben Schwartz, who I'm just a huge fan of, but also Aquafina, who I think deserves better roles in movies. Um, she's kind of just always the the joke person in these movies. And her character, she has an arc around her father and her sister and being a cop. And then Ben Schwartz obviously has the storyline of being um, the son of a mafia boss. But overall, those two storylines are just not as interesting. We'll get into that in the negatives. But it's always great to see Aquafina uh, and Ben Schwartz in a movie um, like this. The other great part about this movie is there are tons of action scenes to be had. And the, it's rated R due to it's one of the goriest movies I've seen in a long time. Now, it's gory in a cartoon way. Um, blood just explodes. CGI blood just ex pops and explodes. Um, and I had tons of fun with the cartoonish aspect of the action scenes and the and the blood that just goes everywhere. I mean, it is extremely gory. Um and it might not be for you if you like blood just everywhere and gushing all over the place. But for me, I had tons of fun watching the action scenes in this movie. And overall, it's just a fun, easy breeze of a 90 minutes in the movie theater. This isn't a great movie, uh, but you can definitely have some fun with this film. Uh, for me, as I said, the cast is so far away the best part um, of this movie. Uh, but, and also, also one of the best parts of the movie is the kind of, not the therapy, but the session scenes when Renfield goes to church and he has this scenes with all these people who are suffering things, um, those scenes are easily the funniest aspects of the movie other than Dracula. Um, and the relationship that Renfield builds with these people is also great. So those are kind of my main positives. If I want to go into negatives, um, this movie, as I said, it's very quick, but it feels extremely rushed. And it feels like there was a lot left on the cutting room floor. Uh, especially with Aquafina's character, who feels like a lot of her scenes just got cut to move the plot forward. There's also too many criticisms where um, where characters have to be in this one place at the same time. Um, it's like, oh, okay, so Renfield has to be here, and then Rebecca has to be here, and then Dracula needs to be here, and all the crime people have to be here. There's too many situations where it just seems forced that all of these characters can be in the same place at the same time. Um, I always say that word wrong again. Sorry if I if that case came off to you guys. Um, as I said, the Aquafina character and the Ben Schwartz character just were not that interesting at all to the movie. Um, again, I like both actors a lot, and I'm obviously cool with them being on screen. But those characters just were very much the B plot line, and I think the movie needed to focus on just a lot more on the Renfield Dracula relationship. Dracula's in the movie, but um, I would have liked a little bit more of him because, again, the Rebecca storyline and the Teddy storyline, those felt like a lot of their scenes were cut. Um, and I think those storylines need to be added in uh, to be a bit more interesting. Um, and I do think the movie does go a bit too fast. There's just no time really to breathe in this movie because uh, it needs to be plot. It needs to be scene of Dracula and Renfield. Then it, go, it needs to go into an action scene. There's just too many. I think the movie definitely goes a bit too quick for pacing purposes. Um, not that the movie is, it's an easy breeze, but I think the pacing just is a bit too fast for my liking. Um, I didn't really think the jokes landed for me as much as I wanted to heading into this movie. I definitely had fun and laughs with this film, but not as much as I thought coming in. I laughed, but there's actually a bit more of a comedy than I thought that really missed the mark for me. Um, and because this is a definitely, this not will not be for everyone, and at times it just wasn't for me, there really just is no sense of realism in this movie. The fact that this takes place in the actual world and people just believe that Dracula is running around, um, there's just a sense of believability that just isn't in this movie. And for me, it definitely pulled me out of a lot of scenes that a mob boss is perfectly cool with meeting Dracula. It all makes sense. I think this movie needed a bit of sense of realism to actually elevate the film as well. So overall, uh, this is not a good, not a great movie. Certainly not a bad movie. I had fun with the main cast um, and the action scenes. And I would love to see Cage and Holt get back at these characters. But overall for me, not a great movie, but a fun enough time in the theater. I'm going to give Renfield a three out of five stars. I'm going to go 63% for Renfield. See you in theaters now. Thanks for joining me on this video. I'll see you guys soon.